the Tech on Techies podcast. I'm your host, tech entrepreneur, executive coach, and Chicago Booth MBA, Sophia Matilda. My aim here is to help you have a great career in the digital age. In a time when even your coffee shop has an app, you simply have to speak tech. On this podcast, I share core technology concepts, help you relate them to business outcomes, and most importantly, share practical advice on what you can do to become a digital leader today. If you want to have a great career in the digital age, this podcast is for you. Hello, smart people. How are you today? On the day that this comes out, which is Wednesday, the 29th of March, 2023, I am teaching a super awesome class called Demystify Digital. It is free and it's specifically aimed at smart, non-technical leaders like you. If you are on the business side and you didn't start your career at Google, or if you didn't end up in a super digitally savvy company just by sheer luck, then this class is what you need. I'm going to teach you three core concepts that all business leaders need to know, whether you want to lead in a corporate or start a tech business or be a smart money investor. I'm also going to show you how different professionals have applied this knowledge to take their careers to the next level. You'll hear how this knowledge is being used at BMW, in venture capital, and also by startup founders. So it's going to be super good. The link to the demystified digital class is in the show notes. And also you can just go to techfanontechies.co forward slash events. So if you are listening to this podcast on the day that it comes out, then sign up. If you're listening to this in future, well, damn, you missed it. You know what to do then. The way not to miss the super awesome classes and events that I'm doing is to sign up to my mailing list. I keep on getting compliments about my newsletters, so they're very useful and often quite funny. So go to techfrontechies.co and sign up to the email list there. And now I'm going to tell you about an evening last week when I did not drink as much as I could have done. This is a true tragedy. And you know the barrier that stood between me and my third cocktail? Technology. So today, I want to show you when technology can lose a business money and stand in the way of customer satisfaction and fun. Once you learn how to tell when technology is useful and when it actually destroys value instead, you will be on your way to becoming a true digital leader and smart money investor. So, let me tell you about this two cocktail disaster. Last week, I met up with somebody who had worked at a very senior level in the alcohol industry. And we decided to go to a bar in the public hotel in New York City. It's a swanky place with lots of rich looking hipsters, you know, the kind of people that look really casual from far away. But when you get closer, they're actually wearing $600 trainers. So me and my companion, we sat at the bar and we saw that other people were drinking cocktails and we wanted cocktails too. But there's no menu around and we didn't know what to do. And so we finally flagged down the barman and the barman said, sure, we have a menu. You just have to use this QR code. At this point, we were thirsty. We were determined. It was the end of a workday. So we got our phones out. We scanned the QR code and then the menu popped up. And it was quite hard to see the items on the menu because the text was tiny because basically it was a PDF scan. But you know what? When it's after work and you want a cocktail, you will figure it out. So we were determined, we figured it out and we ordered. And we ended up having two delicious cocktails each. They're really good at the public hotel. And then actually we went our separate ways. So it was very sensible. But honestly, between you and me, I could have ordered more cocktails. I could have also ordered fries and a whole host of other things that were delicious and bad for me. Because, you know, when you're slightly tipsy and then the thought of pizza or sweet potato fries arises, well, most of us are too powerless to resist that siren call. And now here's the tech bit. So my companion who, as I had mentioned, had worked in the alcohol industry, he told me that his company had actually commissioned a study into what happens in bars and restaurants when they use digital menus. 
And guess what? Bars and restaurants make less money when they replace their traditional paper menus with QR code based menus. Why is that? Well, think about your experience. Have you ever gone to a bar for one drink and ended up having three and then ordering a bunch of carby snacks? I mean, come on, it is not just me. Or have you ever gone to the supermarket to buy some milk and ended up coming out with a bunch of other things simply because you saw them and they looked tasty? All of us, okay, well, aside from Gwyneth Paltrow, who I think is insane, but all of us apart from her have had this experience. Why? It's because it's easy. It is easy to pick something off the shelf and then put it in your basket. It is easy to look at a paper menu and then point to the thing you want when ordering. Also, when it's in front of you, the tempting thing keeps calling you and saying, Hello, I am so tasty. I know you want me. Oh, one more drink won't hurt. This is why if a non Gwyneth Paltrow normal person has the cocktail and snacks menu in front of them, well, they are going to be faced with temptation. And you know what Oscar Wilde said about this? He said, I can resist anything but temptation. In the parlance of digital innovation, this is called reducing friction. You as the innovator or as the business leader, you want something to be as easy as possible for your customers. Because when something is easy and it doesn't require thinking, then your customers are more likely to do it. For example, the easier it is to pay for something, the more likely we are to spend our money. Studies have shown that we spend more when we pay via contactless than when we pay in cash. Because think about it, to pay in cash, you need to go to the ATM, then you have to keep the cash in your wallet, then you actually have the actual act of parting with your cash, which really reminds you of what you're doing, that you're parting with your money. And just tapping a piece of plastic on a machine, it doesn't have, it doesn't require the same effort and it doesn't require kind of this, it doesn't have the same emotional strength to it. And also think about it, why do you think Amazon created one-click ordering? Because the smaller the number of steps we need to take to buy something, basically, the more we buy. So let's apply this logic to the QR code in restaurant. Does having a QR code menu add friction or reduce it? Well, it adds it, of course, because you've got to get your phone out. You have to make sure that you're connected to the internet. You then have to scan the QR code and then you usually get a PDF where you can barely see the writing. So you have to really know you want something to go through this experience. But if you're ambivalent, then you're not going to bother. So last week, for cocktails one and two, I was absolutely determined. But after that, I was happy to go with the flow. And you know, the flow took me home, not to giving the public hotel more of my money. From this episode, the most important thing I want you to remember is that not all tech innovation is useful. Just because you can do something using technology, it does not mean you should. Think about your business aims and then see if technology can help you get there. So here I am making the assumption that the public hotel has revenue maximization as a goal. If that is the case, the QR code strategy is not helping them achieve that goal. But you know, I could be wrong. Maybe their goal is to use less paper for environmental reasons. And, you know, if that's the case, great. But there are also other digital solutions that make ordering in restaurants even simpler than using a paper menu. So, for example, my friend runs a company called Codisoft that makes digital tables for restaurants. They're basically like massive iPads, but like a table. So they're interactive devices and the menu is literally in front of you. And so you can order stuff just by swiping on your table and you don't even have to call a waiter. And this is an example of technology reducing friction. And guess what? Because they reduce friction, they help restaurants make more money. And when I lost spec to my friend, he told me that when their digital tables get installed in a restaurant, that average spend per person goes up by about 30%. This shows that some technology helps drive business outcomes, but also other technology literally destroys value. 
So tech innovation by itself should not be put on a pedestal. Instead, you need to see, does this technology help us achieve our aims or not? Focus on your aims, not the digital thing. So, my dears, to sum up, here is what I taught you today. Concept one, sometimes technology can destroy value instead of creating it. Concept two, this is why you always need to remember that technology is a tool for business aims, not an end in itself. So, concept three, make sure that you are clear on your aim. In most cases, it is making more revenue, but it could be other aims like improving security. So just focus on what your aim is and then get technology to help you do that. And concept four is that one of the questions I want you to ask when you are thinking about any new technology is whether it increases friction or whether it reduces friction. If it increases friction, in other words, if it makes it harder to do something, is that your aim? So there are some companies that increase friction on purpose and luxury brands, basically they do that all the time and they do that consciously because they want to have an air of exclusivity. And that decision is working out for them, but it is part of their brand strategy. I don't know if the public hotel made that decision or they just didn't think it through. If you know somebody who works there, then please connect them to me. I would just love to know. But most importantly, just remember, remember that technology works for you. You do not work for it. You are in charge. You are the digital leader. You do not get enamored with tech innovation for its own sake. You keep a cool head and you ask smart questions about how it can serve your aims. And by the way, if you have friends who own bars and restaurants, please send them this episode because it might just help them make more money or at least avoid silly mistakes. If you liked this episode, you are going to love my class today. It's called Demystify Digital, the masterclass for business leaders. So make sure to sign up for that because it's free and it is going to be so, so good. And to really dive deeper into this knowledge and to make it apply to your career, join Tech for Techies. Our members lead digital transformation. They've started tech businesses and they've become smart money investors. All of the links to join us are in the show notes or just go to techfonontechies.co. And my dear, remember what Benjamin Franklin told us. An investment in education pays the best dividend. Thank you, my dear smart person, for listening today and investing in your career. I really do love spending this time with you. Have a fabulous day and I shall be back in your delightful smart ears next week. Ciao.